Hey everybody, it's Gecko here, back with another daily walk-in talk. <sighs> it's a good day, actually, you can see that. Not, a, not many clouds in the sky. A glorious day. It's not too cold, but I figured I'd wear my jacket anyway, because once I get out past the houses it's going to be a little breezy and the sun is going down so uh, let me go ahead and turn y'all around right quick all right well i guess the big news of the day is walmart got back in touch with me and i start my orientation tomorrow night, Monday night, uh, the 31st um, at 10 p.m. And I will be working till 7 a.m. So, I mean, it's probably going to be, be me doing whatever modules that I need to do and training and stuff. And, uh... And then finishing out by probably being put in my assigned area and stocking. I mean, it's not that difficult, you know, and I've done it before. Like I said, I mean, since I moved back to Texas, this is kind of like a, a full circle type deal. My first job I had when I came back to Texas was night stocking at Walmart in Lumberton, Texas. Oh, there's somebody behind me uh, walking their dogs. So, I am ready for this and get back to work. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what their views on masking is. I think it's, you know, whenever you're in close proximity to a large number of people, they require you to have a mask on. But since I'm working nights, um, once the store closes, they probably won't care if you're wearing a mask or not. Because you're pretty much going to be on an aisle by yourself, you know. So, that's going to be a good thing. So, like I said, I can't wait for this. I'm ready. Um, I did hear back from Amazon... Uh, disability leave services about my uh, medical leave um, I got a voicemail from them I got to call them back they wanted me to call them back before the end of business Friday but I didn't get it in time so I'm gonna call them Monday before I go to sleep find out what they need me to do or if they're denying my case or whatever so We'll find out. Uh, the next bit of information is I have started writing my new uh, KDP book, um, which is basically um, seasonal work and applying through... Uh, coolworks.com I still have to come up with a viable title but that's basically what it's going to be about so so far I have kind of like a one page explanation of what seasonal work is and then I put a screenshot of uh, coolworks.com's landing page and then I kind of went into the history of Coolworks you know who it was founded by and why and basically who the people are that run the website now just like a little one sentence biography for each person basically telling what they do for the website 
And then from there, I'm going to go into basically a tour of the website and the different pages that it has. And then the next section will be uh, how to apply for a job using the website. And I'm gonna be using screenshots throughout the entire um, uh, the entire section of that. Then once that's done, and I'm gonna use um, applying for a housekeeping position with YMCA of the Rockies as an example again, like I did for my hubpages.com article. Um, and once that's done, the next section will be basically me talking about all the different jobs that I have applied for on coolworks.com, you know, and the ones that I was offered jobs for, because pretty much all the ones I applied for, I was offered a job, a job at. I just didn't take the jobs for whatever reasons. And then I'm going to go ahead and go in depth about the um, housekeeping position at YMCA of the Rockies. Um, I'm gonna put links to the videos that I have on YouTube on Gecko's Trails about, you know, getting ready for the job, uh, traveling to the job, and basically um, write about uh, what the job is, what the, the job duties were, and do like a day in the life type thing of basically working at that job and then kind of write about the different things that I could do while there, like going into town um, uh, in Estes Park and hiking in the Rocky Mountain National Park and I'll put all kinds of videos, you know, and of the of the wildlife and the landscapes and the the scenery <clears throat> and stuff like that. And also pictures of Estes Park and and all of that. And I'm also going to try to interview people that have done seasonal work uh, through applying on coolworks.com, like um, uh, the girl that went to work at YMCA of the Rockies right after I left, who found my playlist and had watched it and applied through Coolworks and got the job. Uh, her name was Kate, and then there was another guy who commented on my um, my videos saying that he had applied and he was fixing to go there, and he should be there now. And also my friend Eduardo, who was working while I was there and is still there, um, he didn't, I don't think he got the job through cool works i could be wrong but i'll find out and i also want to interview uh timothy ward because he's done a lot more jobs than just ymca of the rockies uh by applying on coolworks.com so his insights would be invaluable as an interview for this because he's done multiple jobs for years and he's always used coolworks.com to apply for his jobs, as far as I know. And of course, um, because it's something that 
involves them, a, a project that involves them, they'll more than likely uh, talk about it on their web, on, on their uh, YouTube channels and Instagram feeds. So that's promotion for the book. And possible sales. Because I know Timothy Ward is a huge supporter and proponent for CoolWorks.com. He actually has a page um, about his experiences on CoolWorks.com. Um, uh, unlike the, the user's pages. So... I'm, I'm kind of excited about this project. It's something that I've been wanting to do. I know I was wanting to do another hubpages.com article about my experience at YMCA of the Rockies using coolworks.com, kind of a, as a, a sequel or a follow-up to my original article. And I may still do that. Um, but I want to do this KDP book because it's something that can actually um generate income for me more so than hubpages.com would because i've been on hubpages.com for years and i have yet to get a check i just uh, none of the referrals that i put up ever get referees so and, and that's how uh tim timothy ward gets a lot of his income from hubpages.com is uh, is from the people he's referred to articles because if you refer somebody you get a piece of their pie for every article that they write and he's referred a lot of people and he makes three four hundred dollars a month off of hubpages.com and he hasn't written an article on there in years and he still gets monthly checks so i keep putting out referral links every so often but nobody ever follows through I don't know now that I've gotten more people in my circle of influence with you know new family members from me finding my birth family maybe they'll be willing to write articles maybe I should just go ahead and put up a new link you know but we'll see. And of course, I'm still researching for my Appalachian Trail video that I'm going to put on the new playlist for long distance trails in North America and also the. Uh, KDP book that I'm doing on long distance trails in North America um, of which this Appalachian Trail will be in the volume one of that potential book series because I want to do two different books one for the Triple Crown and Triple Tiara and one for the other trails and I may split I may split it down further by region you know, West Coast or um, West Coast, East Coast, and Central United States. Um, because, you know, there's, I think, 52 or 55 different national scenic trails in the United States. So it's kind of hard. I mean, if I put them all in one book, it would be a long book, I think. So if I split it down by region, um, I think more people would be willing to buy it depending on the trails that they're um, hiking. They may not want a book with all of the trails in it. They might just want a book, say they're going to do the long trail. They, they'll, uh, they'll get the book for the Triple Crown, Triple Tiara which the Triple Crown is the Appalachian Pacific Crest and Continental Divide trails and the Triple Tiara 
is the Long Trail, the Muir Trail, and the Colorado Trail. And the thing about these Tiara Trails is each one of them covers a specific distance on the Triple Crown Trails. Like a part of the Long Trail goes along the Appalachian Trail and part of the Muir Trail goes along the Pacific Crest Trail and part of the Colorado Trail goes along the Continental Divide Trail. So, and the only person I've really heard refer to those other three trails as the Triple Tiara is Dixie. I mean, it may be an actual thing that she heard about or she may have made it up, I don't know. But given her status within the long distance trail through hiking community, I'm gonna take her at her word and use that. And of course I'm citing her by mentioning her, you know, that she is the person I heard this from. But say somebody wanted to hike the, uh, the Florida trail. Well, that would be the East Coast trails. And they would buy that book. Uh, but if somebody wanted to do, say, oh, I don't know, like the Great Northwestern Trail, that would be an East Coast or a West Coast Trail because it starts at the Continental Divide Trail and ends up basically <coughs> at the Pacific Coast in Washington State. You know, and then if they want to do the Great Plains Trail, which is still being worked on, it's not quite ready for unsupported through hikers because of, of water um, issues. But eventually it's gonna be a viable trail. And uh, that one would be in the long distance trails of North America, central United States. Because it basically runs from Texas up to Montana and Idaho and North Dakota. It has two northern terminuses. So, anyway, I think I would make more money doing it in, you know, four different books than just the one book. So that kind of completes the update, pretty much. Um, well, we, we're still, it, it, the, the COVID situation in our house, um, the youngest daughter is free and clear of it. She's back to negative. But the eldest daughter uh, retested yesterday and she is still positive, so she's gonna have to wait another five days or so and then retest but me and the wife are still doing fine um my wife's on her six day off stretch now uh, she works three days uh she usually you know like works three days gets two days off works three days and then has six days off like every two weeks and she does that because she doesn't want to work more than three 12-hour shifts in a row. Because uh, her body doesn't really handle anything more than that very well. <clears throat> at, at some point, we actually thought she had MS, uh, multiple, multiple sclerosis. Um because she was having a lot of medical issues that impeded her motor functions with her left leg. And um, they had 
uh, seeing lesions on her on her spinal column and um, brain but those have lessened over the years and now they're they've rethought their diagnosis and retracted it so now they just don't really know what's going on but I think a lot of it had to do with stress and she's in a better place now and a lot of those symptoms have gone away so that's a good thing so that's pretty much the updates I mean the job the books and videos and COVID Let me get past these people. <laughs> you too. So as far as the research for the, I, I don't think I kind of completed the update on the the video and and book for the uh, long distance trails and the research that I'm doing for the Appalachian Trail. I'm still currently working on the spreadsheets. Um, as I mentioned before, I've done the spreadsheet for the different trail clubs. Um, I'm still working on the spreadsheet for the different shelters. And of course, those are just going to be things that I'm going to mention in the video. And I'll have links to wherever I post them. Um, but they will definitely be included as, as tables in the book. Um, so... It's something that I need to do, not necessarily for the video, but definitely for the book. Um, and then I'll I'll do another table for, um, maybe not a table, but um, uh, a list of uh, the gear needed for the trail. And I I'll, I'm not going to make. Uh, brand recommendations. I'm just going to put the item. And I'll leave it to the reader to basically choose the quality and price of the, the gear themselves. And then I'll do another one for the proje projected budget. You know, how much you need for travel, how much you need for um, lodging, how much you need for food. Um, how much you'll need for gear and uh, for gear I'll kind of put an estimation for initial gear and then gear replacement because inevitably gear breaks down gets holes whatever and they, it needs to be replaced on the trail so that has to be a consideration when you're factoring in your budget. And you also might want to have a section of your budget dedicated to excursions off the trail. You know, say you get up towards uh, like Washington DC or New York City and you want want to actually go into the cities for like a weekend or whatever you know that would be out of that budget and you know so you know that's pretty much it and then I'll have an overall timetable of about how long it'll take to hike the trail 
I mean, and a lot of that depends on your hiking speed. You know, how many miles you do a day and how many zeros you take while you're on the trail or uh, if you have any <clears throat> um, events that you have to get off trail for, like a, a family member's graduation or a wedding or, or a, uh, an anniversary or something where you want to go home and, and take your other half out and spend some time with them on your anniversary or whatever. I mean, there's all kinds of different reasons people get off the trail. And then, of course, you have, you've been injured on the trail and you need time to recover. So, that has to be taken into account when you're talking about your timetable for hiking. <clears throat> so, that's pretty much the different areas that I want to cover on each trail. And then, of course, I do want to do a list of, uh, like, shuttle services and trail angels. No, coyote. Oh, he's fairly close. There's a couple of them. They're probably in that distant tree line. Yep, anytime there's a siren, they will go off. I didn't see any movement at the edge of the tree line, so they I think they're in the tree line. And of course, the, the video doesn't necessarily do perspective justice, because the tree line's a lot closer than it looks like in the, in the video. Let's see if I can't. scroll into it like, I don't see any movement on that little berm or whatever and that's right at the tree line and I have noticed um, when I'm taking these videos and it looks like the screen is shaking when I watch the videos it doesn't really shake so I think it has an internal stabilization within this phone camera system, which is awesome. That's a good thing. Cause I notice, you know, my hands shake, whether they're cold or just because they shake. Um, it doesn't really translate into the finished video, which is awesome. Even the little shaking I do when I'm walking doesn't really show up. So, that's a good thing. Oh, and that sunset is spectacular. That halo right at the horizon is just awesome. That halo doesn't really translate into the, phys my, the physical what I'm seeing, but it looks awesome on video. That's what it looks like to me. Oh, I was all the way out at 0.5. That's why I was doing that. Anyway.
So that's pretty much the updates. I'm thinking with this Walmart job, I'm gonna have set days that I work. It's probably going to be, um, let's see, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday night through Friday night. And then I'll probably have Saturday and Sunday nights off. So, that'll be pretty cool have every weekend off pretty much of course there were some thursday nights i liked to go out to stonewall um when they had their emo nights but you know emo is not really my scene i did it mainly because they had the burlesque shows but you know uh saturday night uh saturday nights are the big headline nights I think if they have any like major drag shows they're gonna be on Saturday nights or Friday nights um, but you know I'll be happy either way <clears throat> you know and I'm only gonna be doing this job for as long as it takes to get me out on a trail at the most <clears throat> because you know that's my main goal is to go through is to be through hiking and eventually I mean hopefully not eventually but hopefully when I do get out on a trail and through hike that will start my basically full-time YouTube career because I want to be a full-time YouTuber and when I'm not through hiking I can be doing other things uh, like maybe metal detecting or or magnet fishing or something else other YouTube niche video channels that I like to watch and not only YouTube channels but uh uh, Facebook uh, video channels but you know a lot of these people are on both so um, a lot of them that do the YouTube channels will post their videos on Facebook video as well and some of them even do it on Instagram videos IGTV and I may do all three I don't know you know, just to pull in viewers and subscribers and, you know, to help with the monetization of the YouTube views. Um, but, you know, mainly the um, Instagram will basically be its own videos. You can't post YouTube videos on Instagram. So the YouTube video viewership would be from youtube and facebook because um the facebook videos will be the youtube videos it'll basically be links to the youtube videos <clears throat> but um igtv you upload your own um videos to igtv you don't upload a youtube link but that's fine but you know youtube may have some sort of clause stating that any YouTube video that is also on someplace else doesn't um, qualify for monetization. So I'm going to have to look into that. And if that's the case, it'll just be YouTube only.
not really much else going on. I did, when I did my uh, Purgatory Creek walk and talk just recently, um, I think that was actually the, the previous video to this one. Um, I ended up walking or hiking uh, 10 miles and when I was done, I mean, my feet felt perfectly fine. They didn't hurt at all. No blisters, no hot spots. I was mildly surprised. Usually I have at least hot spots. But I did take my time this time. I stopped quite frequently, relatively speaking to my other hikes. And I, I basically took my time. I mean, because when you're through hiking, you're not gonna be going for you know, like 10, 10 miles in three hours or four hours, you know, and that's it. I mean, you can. But you know you want you want to save your feet. You know, if going slower helps save your feet for hiking the next day and the day after that and the day after that, then by all means do that. Because you don't want to rush yourself and go at a pace that's going to give you blisters when you're hiking every day. So I think that was a good run for, you know, taking my time, but still getting miles in because, you know, you're not necessarily going to do 10 miles right out the gate, you know, especially if you're doing elevation because that's harder on your feet and knees. Um, and I definitely have to watch out for my knees um, because like two days after I hiked, my my knees were kind of sore so I need to I need to watch that wow that sunset man beautiful and a little rays going off of it up from the horizon sunbeams that is cool anyway um, <clears throat> so I mean yeah I mean most people when they're starting out on the Appalachian Trail just do the approach trail on the first day. That's eight miles. But then again, it is entirely all uphill going up the mountain. So you want to start off slow. So chances are on that first day, I'll, I'll leave from... Amicalola Falls Visitor Center, go through the arch, go up the falls steps, and then go to Springer Mountain Shelter and spend the night and then do my first mile of the Appalachian Trail the next morning. So, <clears throat> and then once I do my first day on the trail I can you know pick the shelter closest to the mileage that I want to do and and hike there and I will more than likely try to stop at shelters every night I won't I more than likely won't be sleeping in the shelters I have I'll be in my tent but there may be some days where I just don't want to fucking mess with a tent when I'm hiking and just pull out my sleeping pad and sleeping bag and just, you know, sleep in the shelter. I don't know. I'll make that decision when I get there. But staying at shelters makes it a lot easier to know how many miles you've hiked in a day. You don't necessarily have to look at gut hooks or uh, the far out app. Just, you know, say, okay, I started here and I went here and I've subtracted this from that and that 
and uh, that's how many miles I did today. No, I mean, you just look at that spreadsheet that I made for the shelters and say, okay, I started at this shelter at mile whatever, and I, I, started, I started at this shelter at mile whatever, and I ended up at this shelter at mile whatever, and subtract. You know, and I did that many miles today. It's just a lot easier, I think. Of course, I haven't really used the Far Out app, so it may be just as easy using that. I don't know. But we will see. But I definitely can't wait to get my ass on a trail, man. Oh, man, I keep saying that, but it never gets less real, you know? <laughs> never gets any less true. I would much rather be hiking through the mountains than hiking on this sidewalk. Oh, my head's getting cold. Hold on. Sorry if I'm shaking y'all around. But man, yeah. I mean, right now, I could, I could go with the gear I have right now if I really, really wanted to. I mean, I don't have a sleeping pad and I don't really have any waterproof bags, but I can use garbage bags and get a compactor liner for the main compartment and be done. I mean, and on the Appalachian Trail, you don't really necessarily have to have an in reach. So there is that because it's such a populated trail. Although my wife doesn't want me to go without one. And honestly, it's probably a really good idea. Um, but I, I have decent enough clothes. I have my jacket. Um, I would probably, you know, need to get some sort of gloves on the way, but that's easy. You know, just go to Walmart, get a pair of gloves. You know, until I can find a decent pair of water waterproof gloves. You know, I can wear like a pair of like the latex kitchen gloves or whatever. You know, the big green long whatever for doing dishes, the gloves. Put them under a pair of gloves, you know, bigger gloves to keep my hands dry and warm and then you know I have beanies that I could wear they're not merino wool but and I don't necessarily have a buff but you don't have to have that stuff to through hike I mean it's a lot more comfortable to do it that way I have a scarf I can wear I got a Burberry scarf um, that I got for Christmas one year I could use that so I basically in a pinch if I wanted to have all the gear I need if I really wanted to but you know I do want to get better waterproof bags I want to get an ursac for my food to keep the food scent in. You know, I want to get an in-reach. I want to get a good pair of, of gloves. I want to get decent hiking socks. And there's just stuff that I would rather go through hiking with and be fully prepared than just getting out there with the bare necessities. But right now it's not really an issue because of the budget constraints I'm forced to endure right now with not getting my social security disability um, and you know having rent at this point
So chances are I won't be able to get out on the Appalachian Trail this year. I'm still hoping against all hope that something happens and I can. I did find out that the uh, that small business grant, growth grant that I applied for on Hello Alice, I did not get. So that was a $10,000 $10, grant. Um, so that avenue is closed to me now. Um, I can't really, I can't rely on income tax returns because we're going to need that for family finances since my, my wife is fixing to have to repay a lot of the pay that she's gotten because of her jobs, uh, time clock mishaps over the past month and a half or so, two months. So she's going to end up having to repay a lot of money, like probably about three or four thousand dollars worth. Um, but they they have it set up where you can pay as little as ten ten percent of your paycheck. Although she's probably going to do twenty or twenty five percent, especially now that I'm working. And then once she gets that fully paid back, we can maybe look into setting some aside for my through hiking fund or whatever. But I won't be able to get out there this March, mid-March, which is when I wanted to get out there. So it may be the next year or even the year after that before I be, I'm able to get out there. Basically, whenever she goes travel nursing or we don't re-sign our lease. And both daughters are already talking about moving out when our lease is up. Uh, one wants to leave well before then, the youngest daughter, she, she has a friend that she wants to move in with and her friend is already looking for places. <clears throat> and uh, the eldest daughter is talking about trying to find some place, some situation where she can move out so we don't re-sign the lease. So, and that would be uh, basically June of 2023. And the reason I said it would be 2024 in that scenario is because, you know, the hiking season's already in full swing and I don't want to do a Sobo hike. I want to do a northbound hike. Um, because in my opinion, the northbound views and hiking trail is more beautiful and more rewarding than the southbound uh, especially since I grew up in the south so I'm kind of already familiar with that type of of forests maybe not mountains but definitely the forests and um, I just think it would be more rewarding for me to start in familiar places and end up in unfamiliar places where the views are new and and more spectacular in my opinion so i mean if you get that all done at the beginning what it, what what do you have to look forward to towards the end you know so i want to i want to start in familiar territory and end up in unfamiliar territory so Granted, I did spend 10 years up in New York and Michigan, but I never hiked really in those locations. I spent time in the field, but it wasn't in the mountains. It was closer to the Great Lakes where it was more flat. Uh, granted, we were like the foothills of the Adirondacks, kind of like we are here. We're at the foothills of the hill country over there. Um, but I've, I've driven through Vermont from New York, but I haven't actually gotten out to go hike. So that's all new to me. And, you know, just going through like the 100 mile wilderness and Mahusik Notch and, and stuff like that 
it's just more rewarding if you do it towards the end of your hike because it gives you amazing things to look forward to. So yeah, I don't want to do a southbound hike. Eventually, because I've got uh, something that I want to, uh, a tradition in the through hiking community that I would like to start would be, you know, you have the triple crown and the triple tiara, but I want to have a recognition in place for somebody that does the triple crown trails northbound and southbound and that would be the royal six pack and i even have like a a little uh picture that i made of a a six pack of beer that had didn't have any logos or anything on it it was just white cans and I put the, the, the trail emblems and a crown on it and put Nobo AT in the year and Sobo the trail in the year. And you basically have six of them. And eventually there are uh, breweries out there where you can design your own cans. So I thought it would be fun to design cans with those, you know, a can for each trail and direction that people can buy as uh, kind of like commemorate, commemorate, or commemorating and celebrating a royal six pack achievement. You know, something they can buy and they can like put on their on their cabinet or whatever on their mantelpiece. Uh, you want to turn your fucking brights off, dude? God damn. Anyway. <laughs> so eventually, maybe I'll, I'll do the triple crown both ways. But, you know, I'm 52 years old. How many years do I really have? A brights, dude. God damn. I mean, 52, how many productive through hiking years do I have left? That's my main concern. Uh, especially for having to put off these through hikes year after year after year. You know, I want to be out there doing it while I can. You know, I don't want to, you know, years go by and I finally have the money to do it and my back is so messed up that I can't or my knees are so messed up that I can't you know and you know I, I don't want it to be a, a one shot deal you know I want to be able to do the Appalachian Trail and then turn around and do the next trail and then do the next trail and keep doing that until I can't anymore and see how many trails that I can get under my belt. You know, and eventually I would like to do trails, you know, abroad. I want to do the Terrora in New Zealand. I want to do the Camino de Santiago in Spain. I want to do the Tour de Pain in Argentina. The, the Tour de Mont Blanc in France. I would love to be able to hike in different countries. Just to see the different culture and they have different geographies. Like I've watched a through hike in the Tour de Mont Blanc and though that mountain range is like nothing else I've ever seen. It's just so beautiful. And I'm sure the same thing can be said about, you know, the Tour de Pain and Argentina. I've seen pictures of it, but I haven't actually watched the through hike of it. I should probably search for one and, and actually watch one. Um, but as a full-time YouTuber, 
you know, that's what I want it to be. I want it to be me through hiking trails, primarily. You know, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna necessarily do gear reviews and whatever because that's not what I'm doing this for. I'm, I'm doing this for the hikes. You know, I'm, I may end up doing gear reviews, I don't know. But at this point, I'm not planning on it. But as I get more experience, and if they offer sponsorships or free gear, I may turn around and do it. I don't know. And like Dixie, she has a whole bunch of, you know, tips and hacks and everything that she does for through hiking. I may do that too. I don't know. You know, if, you know, if I come across a little tip or a hack that nobody else has said anything about, I may do a video about it. I don't know. It's just the possibilities are endless. And like I said, in my off time, there's other things I could do. Other interests. But it may be that I focus solely on, on, on writing when I'm not hiking, you know. And writing about my trail experiences and doing it for KDP books or whatnot. And not only be a full-time YouTuber, but also an author of through hiking related material and experiences. That's another possibility. And there's also a part of me that wants to write uh, songs and music that's for that's through hiking related. I already have one song done. And I have part of another one done. And I even know what the music sounds like in my head. I would just have to write the music for it and get somebody to play it while I'm singing it or something. And maybe do uh, uh, through hiking related like folk music CD. Who knows? Like I said, the possibilities are endless on the things I can do. It's just I want everything that I do to be centered around through hiking. I mean, that's my chosen passion at this point. And that's what I want my life to reflect. Because I don't think there's any higher thing that you can do in your life than spend it in nature. I mean, I know you have your job, I know you have your family, but, you know, our natural world is basically our, is society's skeletal system. If we don't have nature, we, if we don't have a viable nature to live in, we can't live. And that's part of the reason why I'm also passionate about intentional community and my philosophy of uh, divine sustainability. It's because I believe that people need that foundation in their lives to be symbiotic with our planet. To have the relationship we were meant to have in this world. I mean, we were never meant to be masters of the planet. We're just another cog in a wheel. No different than a mountain or a bear or a tree. We serve a function within the natural order of things. And that was to be caretakers of the natural world, not the masters of it. And we have, as a race, humanity, we have given ourselves overinflated importance within the natural order. And that is killing this planet. And I'm sure some of you won't agree. 
but that's your right. I'm just voicing what I've seen in my own experience and through my own lens of beliefs and what my reality is. Anyway, something's burning, rubber or something. Somebody probably spun their tires. Of course, that is getting stronger. Now, somebody may have a fire going where they burnt some plastic or something or some rubber. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, that's the kind of, that's, that's the direction that I want my life to take. I don't want to be stuck in a nine to five job where my soul is constantly being sucked away and killed in increments. I want to be out there living and doing something worthwhile while doing it. And having this YouTube channel, being a full-time YouTuber, or starting the intentional community and living naturally, that's the way I'll do it. Those are my passions, and those are the, 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 the morals and way of living that I want to promote. And... If you look on the internet, I'm not the only one. I mean, if you look at these intentional communities that are already set up, like Dancing Rabbit Eco Village or um, Earth Haven Eco Village in North Carolina, you know, or in a whole bunch of other places, you know, permaculture schools, uh, different schools for natural building techniques. There's people already out there doing this. You know, so I wouldn't be the only one. It's just, that's what I feel strongly about. And that's what I want to do with my life. It's just, I have to be in a place financially and realistically to do it. And I think by... By getting Gecko's trails monetized and getting some income, hiking my trails, whatever, I can, in my off time, be focusing on those other projects, like the intentional community, or teaching permaculture, or uh, the other techniques, or even my philosophy. And I have another YouTube channel set up specifically for that. Those things, I have one for the philosophy and I have one for, or well, not the philosophy, but um, actually I do have one for the philosophy as well. I just haven't done anything with it. Um, but I can, there, I have like four different YouTube channels and I can be focusing the time that I'm not through hiking on them. You know, I have one for, for my spirituality, Wiccanarium. I have one for... The through hiking uh, dr or uh, for intentional community it's a, uh, a dream of intentional community um, and then I have one for divine sustainability and I can be doing videos for each one and teaching eventually once I get certified and take the classes myself um, and be able to eventually have those YouTube channels monetized. It's just right now I'm focusing on Gecko's Trails. Because I think that's going to be the gateway to everything else. Oh, wow. 
this is already at an hour and four minutes I think when I get up here to this next light I'm gonna cut it down I've pretty much talked about everything I wanted to and at this point I'm just rambling about things I'm passionate about <laughs> so let me get up to this light and I'll go ahead and cut this video down for the night all right well if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button and if you found any value and worth in this video or any other video that i've done go ahead and hit that like button as we are now our subscriber rate is standing at 130 subscribers yay that upward trend is still climbing let's keep it that way guys so while you're at it, go ahead and swipe that notification bell to be notified anytime I upload a new video to Gecko's Trails. And stay safe, guys. And uh, get out there and hike. Hike a trail. Get out in nature. Heal your soul. So that being said, y'all, we'll see you next time. Y'all have fun. Bye.